Tide, Warren Beatty, and who was the age group for Troll. All this and more as we prepare to release another episode of How Did This Get Made? Last Looks, hit the theme! How did this get made? Harry Potter Juniors and Harry Potter Seniors. I'm your talking mushroom, Paul Shear, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? Last Looks, Troll One, where you, the listener, get to voice your issues on the first of this franchise of films. That's right, Troll One, a movie that Discord user Rocket Wesker thinks could have been called Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Ooh, I like what you did there. The end really all ties it together. Anyway, thank you, Rocket Wesker, for that title. And remember, if you have an alt movie title or tagline, submit it to us on our Discord, and we might just read it on the show. That is a promise. We might do it. Anyway, coming up on today's episode, we will be hearing all of your corrections and omissions on Troll. We will also have an exclusive deleted scene from our Troll episode, which was an in-studio episode. What could we have cut out? And Jason will stop by to chat with me about Star Wars comics and, of course, TV that we're loving and our favorite heist movies and so much more. Plus, as always, I will reveal the movie for next week's episode. But let me give you a big old rundown of plugs. That's right, plugs. How did this get made? We are coming back to Philadelphia on November 16th. Tickets are available right now. We will be at the Miller Theater on November 16th. I believe there are 20 seats left for our November 15th show in New York. So get them while you can. And you can see Jason and I performing all around the East Coast. We're going to be in Boston, Brooklyn, and D.C. with Dinosaur. And that group has Nicole Byer, Rob Hubel, Lisa Gilroy, Seth Morris, so many of your favorites, plus so many more. Yeah, that's right. We'll have some special guests. Carl Tart, he's in the group. He's not a special guest. But uh, when we get to New York, you never know. Uh, so definitely check that out. Go to my website or how did this get made website to get your tickets. Tickets are on sale now for all of those shows. And if you're in LA, we got tons of LA shows. That's right. We're going to be doing a bunch of shows. Three new shows were announced at Largo in Los Angeles. So get those tickets while you can. And a big thank you to all of you for what you did. Last week, we did the virtual live show for Troll 2. It was online, and it was so much fun, and we raised $181,000 for Move On, which is activating people to get to the polls. It was an amazing cause, and you all brought it, and we even created a shirt from that night, and the proceeds from that shirt, our Nil Bog shirt, will also be going to move on. Um, wow, oh wow. Oh, and by the way, here's the thing. If you're in LA and you want to have breakfast with me, well, guess what? You can. September 28th, I will be at the LA Breakfast Club and I will be doing uh, a very special show. It will be about all of my celebrity run-ins when I was a kid in Los Angeles. If you read my book, um, there's a story about me meeting Christopher Walken and Michael Landon. That will be the focus of my LA Breakfast Club uh, morning event. It's 7 a.m. I believe the ticket sales stop on September 18th, but don't uh, quote me on that. If you want to make sure that you get tickets, go to my website, uh, paulshear.com, and you will see uh, the ticket link right on the front page. All right. Woo-wee. That was a lot of housekeeping, but now let's get into Troll. 
Here's your chance to set us straight. Fact check us, if you will. It is now time for corrections and omissions. Setting back the fiction in a world of contradictions. Digging up the ugly truth is our stated mission. Sorting through the stinking pile of our suppositions. We to the bar we like to call corrections and omissions. Thank you, Casey Campbell, for that theme. Let's go right to the Discord. Davrox123 writes, When the family is escaping the troll-infested building at the end, why does the mom take a bottle of Tide with her? Is that one of her most valuable possessions? You know what, Davrox? It always is more expensive than you think. That and uh, printer cartridge ink. You got to take it with you. You got you can't just leave that behind. You need to bring the tide because who knows when they'll get to another uh, another house. I mean, and really, the tide is the reason this whole movie exists, because if they didn't go into that fucking washing machine room, they would never have met that troll and the girl would never have been possessed. Tide. This is a commercial for Tide. That's the product placement that the, the Italians are hoping to get in there. Ryan says one, two, one, three gives us an omission regarding why the movie was filmed in Rome. Well, I'm very interested in this. He says the movie's producer, Charles Band, wrote an autobiography where he says he bought a castle in Italy at auction, like we all do, and decided to use it as a shooting location for the bulk of the movies produced by his film company, Empire Pictures. He also bought a production company that was created by Dino De Laurentiis for $20 million in order to fully shoot and produce his films in Italy, which would ultimately lead to Empire's closure in 88 and 89. Well, wow, that was a giant jump from buying to financial collapse. When did he even buy these? How long did it exist? All right, I just hope that some of this film was shot in a castle. Um, Let's go to the phones. Spencer from North Carolina, what do you got? I just wanted to let you guys know, I noticed that in Troll, he was reading a Playgirl-type magazine, which I think was called Play Troll or Troll Girl or something like that, and I was just astounded and had to pause the movie so I could laugh for about 10 minutes straight. It just was one of those things that, hit me and I was expecting y'all to talk about it and you didn't and it was hilarious especially when you think about the fact that this is a kiss movie and could you imagine the questions that that might have started um talking about anyway I agree with y'all I totally recommend this movie it was a fun ride even though I was confused to no end thanks for all you do you know this uh first of all thank you so much Spencer this reminds me of uh, that scene in Howard the Duck, where Howard the Duck, I'm, I'm saying it like you all know exactly what I'm talking about. We did do it on the show, but where Howard the Duck sits uh, in a like a bark lounger and opens up like play duck and you see like a little bit of like nudity with ducks. I mean, it's a weird scene, but as a kid, I was like, whoa. And I do love that, <laughs> like Playboy, <laughs> that they have all these play troll Ugh, it would be disgusting, but maybe that's what the what it is. I don't mean to yuck any yums uh, or troll yums. I don't know. Anyway, uh, next caller. Thank you, Spencer. Can we get a screen grab of that? Uh, all right. Well, uh, this is from uh, oh from Corona, Corona, California. Let's see. Hey, Paul. Thanks for writing such a great book. I enjoyed it so much. I read it twice. Just finished the troll episode, and I know you guys talked a lot about what age group it was intended for. When I was a teenager, I got to go to a preview screening of the movie, and they were specifically looking for people 8 to 16. So I guess they kind of didn't know exactly what age group they wanted anyway. Thanks for a great show. Bye. Whoa. That is a really weird (laughs) age group to pick. 8 to 16. Like, it feels like those are the tail ends of two age groups that you want. You never want in between those two. (laughs) Weird. And... I can't believe that you remember that. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Raina from Rochester. Hi, Paul, Jean, and Jason. I've been listening to your podcast for forever, and I just love you guys. But I will say your troll episode really brought up some joyful recollections of trauma for me. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I watched this movie with my four-year-old brother, And I got so scared, and I was convinced that my little brother was possessed by a troll. So, of course, I asked him if he was possessed. It was a dumb thing to ask a four-year-old. And he said he was. 
and like just started laughing maniacally and um for a day or two I was I was I was pretty scared and then he tried to push me down the stairs and at that point I started pushing with my door locked and um took me a couple of years I got over it but you know we're in our 40s now and I'm not totally convinced that he's not possessed so um he listens to the show too hi Raymond and yeah, so we love you. Um, love your podcast, love your book, and I can't wait for the next episode. Bye. Well, thank you, Rain. I have to say, I just was in Denver this past week, and I met so many How Did This Get Made fans. They all came out to uh, Tattered Cover. Uh, we had a fun time, but man, y'all are the best. Thank you so much for buying my book and buying multiple copies of my book. You, you're truly. It means the world to me. Every time I come back, I just feel, uh, from one of these events, I feel just absolutely fantastic. Um, Here's what I'll tell you. Get out. Get out. I don't like this story at all. I think he's possessed too. We have to kill him. Uh, No, Raina, stay safe. We need to give her some sort of orb of protection. Even though that's not in troll, I feel like we need, or get her a mushroom plant. Raina, get a mushroom plant. Um, All right. Next up, Lisa from Kansas City. Hey, Paul. I just wanted to make mention that June Lockhart is still alive. She is 99 years old. She was born on June 25, 1925. She was even in Meet Me in St. Louis with Judy Garland. So anyhow, I just thought that was an interesting tidbit. Thanks. Bye. Whoa! I did not... Get that, and and you know what, Scott, our producer, did remind me, me that June Lockhart was also in Holiday in Handcuffs. She's fucking good, man. June Lockhart, killing it. 99. 99. Wow. Well, way to go, June Lockhart. Um, back to the Discord. Coolio uh, Julio, or Julio, uh, says, A quick correction regarding Paul's anecdote about the movie's producer asking Phil Fondacaro, the actor playing Malcolm, to run around in Cannes in a troll costume to promote the film. Phil actually refused the request because it was too hot outside. Then, when the circus performer put on a costume instead, she was the one who passed out from the heat exhaustion. So Phil told Charles, I told you, and then continued to bring it up whenever the director asked him to wear the bulky costume again. So half right, half wrong, and I appreciate that correction. Um, Terrible. Terrible. Wearing that fucking costume around can. Um, All right, anyway, I think um, they made George Clooney and Brad Pitt wear wolf costumes for their new movie, but who knows. Um, It's a real inside joke. I don't even think people know the name of that movie yet. (laughs) Alby Robe <laughs> movie is called the Wolves. Uh, uh, Alby Robles uh, says, "Hey, hey, hey! June is right. Mixed Nuts is the best movie, but Julia Louise Dreyfus is not in it. The rollerblader described by Jason is played by the great Parker Posey. Yes, of course, of course." So how much does June really like it? We'll never know. Anyway, uh, so many great corrections and omissions this week, but there can only be one that is the best. One that truly stands above all the others. And I have to give it to the person whose life is in the most amount of danger. Raina from Rochester, you are the winner. And I'm giving this to you now because I'm afraid that your brother is going to get you. So anyway, sit back and enjoy this amazing song from John Astonish and Trey. And then when you're done, go on the run. You can never be found. You are just gonna win. I just gonna win. You are just gonna win. I just gonna win. Gotta just keep me. You just keep me. We gotta just keep me. You just keep me. There it is. Thank you, John, Astonish, and Trey. And once again, congratulations, Raina. All right, people. What do we got here? I got some fun for you. This is a good, this is a good one. Okay, remember, uh, if you want to put one of your songs, if you want to be like the next John, Astonish, and Trey, all you got to do is send us a song at how did this get made at earwolf.com. We're accepting songs for corrections and omissions, just chat, and winner themes. Keep them short. 15 to 20 seconds is best. And a winner theme even shorter than that. Uh, and if you want to chime in with your own thoughts about the latest episode, hit us up on the Discord at discord.gg slash hdtgm or call us at 619-PAULASK. All right, coming up after the break, Jason will stop by for a just chat and then I will announce next week's movie. But first, check out this deleted scene from our troll episode where we discuss 
if it's weird that the kids in the film share a bedroom. You know, it's interesting because we were talking about the floor plans and the layouts, right? And how big these apartments are, these big, giant apartments. You'd think if you had this much space in an apartment, your two kids wouldn't need to share a room. Jason, I was so upset that they were sharing a room. I thought it was so strange that those two children at the ages they're getting to are sharing a room. That was odd to me. It looked weird, though. I, I think that my gut is... That they, I don't know if it was exactly the same room because when, or they, or maybe it's just bad camera work because it seems like their beds are on. No, it's the same room because he looks over at her and she looks back and is like, (laughs) oh, okay. I thought that the troll just snuck in. No, I mean, he uh, falls asleep. They fall asleep next to each other in two twin beds. Yeah, and the shadow of the troll is going over his face, and then he looks, and it is the troll. Then he looks back, and it's her. All right, people, I hope you are keeping up with our matinee Mondays. Every Monday we release a film uh, or an episode of our podcast based on a film that we watch. Uh, and this is a favorite, a fan favorite, because it wasn't released for a long time. It is 2001 Swordfish with John Travolta. And uh, go listen to it. Uh, I believe that was in Denver, where I just was. And uh, next week's matinee will be um, Judge Dredd, Stallone, back in it. All right, without any further ado, it is now time for a just chat with Jason. Rob, play us in. Jason, Paul. it's been some time. Just you and me Ugh. talking about the stuff that we like. Just digging in man, on oh, man. all that stuff. <laughs> I got to tell you, I know you'll appreciate this because, you know, sometimes it's a just chat. Sometimes it's just a Star Wars chat. But I want to bridge it here and say that my eight-year-old oh, has what do we got? R- finally gotten into Star Wars. Yes. Very much a big a Boba Fett person. So Ooh, I love that. Uh, here's the weird thing learning about Star Wars through the Lego game and then coming oh. through the back door with the movies. So interesting. Yeah, sure. Loves Return of the Jedi, but learning and like coming to me and saying, hey, and this is a spoiler for, I mean, this is out, but they're like, oh, did Kylo Ren kill Han Solo? And I'm like, why do you ask? He's like, because I just played that level. I'm like, Yes. And he's oh, like, okay, well, I want to watch that movie a, now. Oh, the game so, gives I away. Know. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, yeah. That's a bummer, actually. But uh, but that's, uh, I love that. I remember talking to a friend of mine years ago who said that he was trying to force his son to wait as long as possible before showing him the next movie in the in the right. that was up, he was like, "I want him to have the experience we had, which was talking about it and and asking questions and thinking about it, and and then waiting and having to wait until the next one rather than oh, within a weekend uh, he's watched all three of the original and then next weekend all three prequels or whatever, you know? Yeah, well, that's this is the the issue is like sometimes also you go into the schoolyard and oh, yeah. uh, and then they they reveal everything. But, you know, it's I'm so interested in watching my kids start to wrap their heads around movies now, yeah. like like in a different way. And I and you look, he watched Empire Strikes Back when my older son liked Empire Strikes Back, but has no memory of mm-hmm. it. And now he's in and what he likes and what he doesn't like and what he wants to see. But what I found is uh, and this is going to tie it all together. Uh, he really loves Han and uh, Leia and Luke. And knowing that they die, he's like, I don't want to watch that, nor do I want to watch the ones before it. Wow. Uh, he's like, I don't want to see them get old, which was, <laughs> you know, really of course, uh, of an interesting. Well, because like that's especially those first movies. It's there. I mean, all the movies that really are for kids, and yeah. you're seeing a kid, you know, a sl- a teenager. I guess you're seeing in the eyes yeah. through the eyes of a teenager. So then that feels doable to then see Luke Skywalker as an old man or is crazy. Well, and so thankfully, what we have found is the Star Wars comics, which take place like right in around. Between. Yes. And so this has been a huge boom. He is right now reading uh, a great comic about um, 
Bounty Hunters. It's right after oh, uh, Boba Fett it. has taken Han Solo's body in carbonite yep. to Jabba the Hutt. So it's like, I think it's called Revenge of the Bounty Hunters. It might be, Jason Aaron might have written that. He, we're reading it's a lot of one, Jason Aaron. It's the one where all, everybody is trying to f- find where Boba Fett loses yes. Han Solo frozen in carbonite. And yes. all the other bounty hunters, all the crime syndicates, everyone is after the carbonite Han Solo. And it's working great. Great. It is. I love and that, that has really become uh, a big the one. Other, so, like, the other yeah. one that he that he might like is the the first Darth Vader run where well, that's it takes amazing. place right yeah. after um Sith. And it's about young Darth Vader needing to go and find his lightsaber. Uh oh. needing not to find a lightsaber, to find it's it's so great. So and this was in the fantastic Leslie Headland, our friend, oh, yeah. past guest of the show. Leslie Headland's show, The Acolyte. This is this is featured in it a bit. The idea of bleeding a kyber crystal, of taking a kyber crystal, oh, right. a regular kyber crystal. This is how a Sith lightsaber is made. They find a kyber crystal and they bleed it. So it goes from blue or green or whatever to red. There are no red lightsaber. There are right. no red kyber crystals. And you saw it in uh, in the Acolyte and in this comic so book is the other place it is where Darth Vader has to go and find a, find a Jedi who was not killed by Order 66, battle him, get his lightsaber, and bleed the kyber to create Darth Vader's lightsaber. Oh, you see, I haven't read that one. I read the one where, it's a great which one. is the one that I think should be made into a movie, the one where Darth Vader crashes on a planet. Vader down. Oh, Vader so down, good. it's called. So yeah. good. So good. So good. And yeah. and then, of course, I will say, it, this is a non, a character who's yet to appear in live action. All of the Dr. Aphra stuff is so fantastic. Oh, I so love Dr. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Dr. Aphra is great. And I, that's where I have to kind of figure out how to get in. Like, right now, he's playing Star Wars Battlefront all the time. He's playing Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Uh, and wow. then he will watch me play Star Wars Outlaws, which... I talked to you. We texted about this. I haven't. Uh, I downloaded it but the other day, but I have yet to play it. I know uh, much to the Internet's uh, chagrin. I enjoy it. It's fun. It's it's yeah. my perfect type of game where I can commit to. It's the level of time and commitment that I have that is fulfilling. Yeah. You know, basically. Well, and I feel like I read a little bit about it, and I feel like the stuff that is annoying people, I'm not good enough at games to be bothered by. That's exactly where I fall on it. I am having so much fun because, you know, uh, after the first chapter where you do this big robbery, uh, you get sent to a planet, and you have to raise money, and there's four syndicates on this right. planet, and you have to kind of uh, not only run jobs for them, but also play them against each other and you're standing within their syndicates so you like part like of it that. is it's really fun like it has, like, so it has, it's really fun and the and the i think the thing that i read that encapsulates it perfectly is like it's a fine masterpiece like it's like oh, it's yeah. like okay pretty, fine and it's like a fine masterpiece though it's like it's weird it's, yeah. I, I, don't, I think people wanted more but i i'm incredibly content i i also feel like it's probably my level of gaming you know. Yeah, I'm just going to be excited I feel like to explore Star Wars worlds. I yeah. know that the game, you know, the note that I heard was that the game is kind of just like other games. It's not like right. it doesn't have enough special moves or special guns or special this is or that, but that the game, the worlds and the all of the Star Warsiness of it is incredible. And that's know? what I really like about it and I'm having exactly. fun and, and the, uh, yeah. So it's like so uh, all in all uh in my very limited playing cuz now what I got I mean, this is really uh, nerdy, but uh, I bought it for my son for his birthday, and I, when he goes to bed, I'll use it. Is that PlayStation Portal? So, what's that? It's basically uh, you can play PlayStation wherever you want. It's it's like I'm trying to think of how to describe. Is it, it like, like a Switch? Is it like yes, a Switch? Yes, essentially, it's exactly a Switch, but it connects to your PlayStation. So sure, as long sure. as your PlayStation is online, wow. you could just jump in. So like last night, uh, I'm just playing in bed. Having a great time, like because it's like oh, it, you oh, know, like cool. you know, yeah. play it and then I'll go. And we went away. At, Have uh, you, can you play it on your um, Apple Vision uh, no. goggles? Can you play it on uh, goggles? No, no. I think what you would, I, maybe you, maybe you could. This is more like that it's would a be incredible. that would be to have your hands be able to do that and see it. That would be awesome to run around on a Star Wars planet and have it be I your entire you field of vision would be incredible. Oh, I'd love that. You, um, have you have you explored at all? 
watching any of the animated shows with him. I like am if you started Clone Wars, that might be an interesting avenue in because it's all about them being young. You and know? that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, where does he? Where is his entrance? There's to also start? young Jedi adventures. Um, I said that seems too show. young, right? That seems yeah, like it's I like they're so. like babies. So I have to find like this middle ground of Lego Star Wars. They're younglings. They're okay, younglings. Yes, is yes, what they are. Young, they're not even yes. Padawans. They're younglings. And then and, and, and like they look very cute. Um, and not but, for uh, nothing, I I play Bolcher the Hot on that show. What? Don't don't you worry about it. I am. Oh I play, my I, I play god! A, like a, I don't know if he's a teenager. Like I play like a a villain, a hut villain who they're, they're all the kid. The kids are always getting one over on. I love that. Oh, I'm so yeah. jealous of that. I know. I couldn't. I was. It was the fastest I've said yes to anything in my life. Ah, oh, that is truly great. I love that. I love it. He likes these characters and he likes Boba Fett. So I'm trying to figure out how to get like, um, you know, Lego Star Wars is perfect because he's yeah. got a good sense of humor. So he's loving to laugh at it and he's finding the jokes of it. So I'm like, again, I don't want to overwhelm him, but I yeah. show him stuff and I let him pick up. And I think the next thing I'm going to probably figure out is like, maybe the Clone Wars is the way we go. We could go in there and see, but it's like. Rebels, Rebels could be interesting Rebels, as well because I Rebels love, yeah. has such a good is such a good serialized story. Clone Wars yeah. is all over the place. It's all out of order. It's all, it's such a mess. It's a great mess, but it's such right. a mess. I found something online to figure out how to watch it. Exactly. But yeah, so we're trying to, I'm just trying to get there with him. I'm trying to get, you know, like we Ooh, are, I we're watching, that. we're watching Bob's Burgers, uh, which the is best. great. Uh, the and absolute best. Yeah, really. And it's, and he's loving that. So we, we're figuring it out. We're figuring it out. I love that. I love I love Bob's Burgers. I think that's one of the consistently most wonderfully funny and heartfelt shows on and is a, a it's a constant rewatch for me. It is truly one of the best. I'm a huge fan of it and uh you know, I'm not I've never been on it, but I, I am uh, still a huge fan. But it's one of those shows where I'm like everyone's on the show. I'm, I I feel like I oh, may yeah. have done something wrong. I and and uh, <laughs> I, I, li- I live with a slight uh, panic that oh, I I'm made sure a that's not the case. I think we all have that list. <laughs> right. We all have that list in our heads of like, how come, how come I haven't been able to ever do that? Like, yeah. that's a, hmm, how come? Yeah, and, and you know what, and sometimes I know this from many a times, you go, oh, I don't want to give that to that person, it's too small. Oh, I want to give them, th- oh, yeah. you, you sometimes get to a zone where you start to, uh, you you almost you make it so elusive that then there's nothing that will be good and yeah. then you never get that person in the show. Uh so there you go. What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> um I've been a, I've been doing a lot of I'm boy am I watching a lot of stuff. I'm I've been doing I'm on the road I've been on the road a bunch yes. so I've been just crushing stuff um oh, sitting in a Vancouver hotel for Percy Jackson just watching Episode, I've been just obsessively watching original Law and Order, like Wow, Jer- Jerry Orbach, you know Sam Waterston, Law and Order from Chris Noth to uh, Jill Hennessy from you know every iteration. I've been watching so much old Law and Order, and it's a blast. It's so those are fun. really fun. They're fun. Every week, uh, the guest stars are like Patti Lupone, and here's Dennis O'Hare, like incredible Broadway actors, season after season coming in. It's a blast. Um, I've been watching Shorzy season three came and went and was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I don't think it, it has been a while since we've gotten to talk because my yeah. my list of stuff to watch a bunch of it is like Shorzy season three alone season eleven um, you know like incredible stuff that has now finished or is, right 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 you know, yeah wrapping up but um, Shorzy season three I think was just a phenomenal TV series I, I have to get I, I like and this is the thing June and I don't want to blame my wife because she's amazing but she does not want to yeah. um watch a lot of of stuff that is not someone who has been brutally murdered uh, you know Ugh, which is always that's uh tough it's Ooh, uh, you know what hard. you guys yeah. might like speaking what? of because i'm still on my kick of like any kind of mystery murder mystery detective i will watch it yeah so um there's a show called diara from detroit that's on bet plus Ooh. that is 
so good and so funny. And it really is the kind of show that I love and that I feel like, boy, am I glad she's making this show. Um, it's just, what if a murder mystery happened to a regular person? Like a school teacher that. in Detroit goes on a number of dates with someone who then disappears and now she's trying to solve the mystery while maintaining her regular life, which is... That is... That, the careening back and forth is dynamite. I love that. And I will say that I've gotten into... A lot of heist things lately. I've been watching a lot of Ooh, heist what do you stuff. Got? Oh, there's a movie. I don't know if you've ever heard of it because I never even heard of it. It's called Dollar Sign. And don't it's know it. War- Warren Beatty and Goldie Hawn. Oh, and wow. it takes place in Germany with uh, the actor who played Goldfinger in Goldfinger. Uh, okay. Right? So uh, <laughs> yeah. the premise is Warren Beatty uh, does security systems for banks or really this one bank making okay. it the most secure bank in uh germany and it's a heist i won't go into it more than that because i think i'll start to unravel too many threads uh sure. goldie Hawn, uh plays a sex worker uh who has already been working with warren Beatty, and they have a little scheme but the climax of the movie is quite literally a 35 minute foot chase like oh wow and it is at first you're like this is stupid this is silly i'm not into it and then minute seven hits or minute eight and i'm like this is the most dramatic thing i've ever watched because it's just two men running i love that after each other and neither of them are exceptionally they are fit they are yeah. running huh. for very important purposes and it's sloppy and weird. And it is like Ooh, at the cool. end of it, my heart was racing because it, oh, it's wow. just, I love it, this. it's so simple. I, I can't even, and it blew, it blew my mind. That movie, I mean, it, 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 it maybe not my favorite of all of them. I really liked it. Um, but That's it all cool. started because I start. I watched that movie, The Instigators, which people seem sure. to hate, but I loved it. I love that too. I um, watched half of it. I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm a sucker for a Doug Lyman movie. Me um, too. I, you know, I, I'm gonna quibble with some people's Boston accents, but well, that you know, I mean, but yes, that, but that's to be expected. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I don't. I I also similarly was kind of like, why don't people like this? This is totally fine to me. It's it's just like a fun. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm I'm just watching it, and I'm like, you know who's great in it? It's fucking Ron Perlman, man. Ron Perlman. I haven't gotten to Ron. Oh, Perlman. oh shit! When you get to Ron Perlman, <laughs> oh my god, Ron Perlman! Like, and that like that's when it like. Oh, I can't wait! I can't wait. Uh, there's some. Oh, you 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 will enjoy it. It, it. Like, if you haven't yeah, gotten to that I'm part excited. yet, you haven't even seen some of the good stuff. That's in no, no. I have. Oh, I don't think I've seen any of the good stuff. All right, you great. know, I really just watched a bunch of the Act One, and okay, I was like, great. okay, I'll come back. I'll come back to this for sure. Yes. You'll like it. I, um, I guarantee it. But that's the kind of movie, that kind of um, street level crime movie, yeah. you know, is what I love and what so much Me of what too. we talk about, too, because like and I've been rewatching like I just rewatched Get Shorty and L.A. Confidential. How, how and a is bunch Get of, Shorty? I watched it. Get but Shorty. I'm like, good. I mean, it's it's good. It's good. It's, okay. You know what it is? It's a perfect 4 p.m. on a Saturday movie. Okay. It's, I would have been, I would be a little disappointed if I watched it at like nine o'clock, eight o'clock prime time, right, right. but it was a perfect afternoon. Like what a blast that movie is. LA Confidential, home run. Great. Well, that's Fantastic. amazing. And you know, I have to say, I rewatched the entire Ocean's Eleven trilogy as oh, well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, every now and then you go back and go, oh, well, I was wrong. I was this. I got to say Ocean's 12 is really yeah. good is really, really good because it's like, I think it's that thing where we get into a zone in the moment. We're like, oh, it's not the same thing that I liked before where was they did the thing. It's like, but it's it's better. It's like they actually took it and and, and evolved it. And whereas the third one I like, and it's the third one is like kind of like a real like, Bah, 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 the third bah, bah. one is super nuts and I mean, really just, goes off the rails, I think. But those movies are fun. Those movies are fun as fun. hell. They're fun. And it's like, and it's like, it's fun. But I thought that two is truly like a a bit of a masterpiece in 
using all these characters in a way that didn't feel redundant. And and I'll put uh, another movie that I feel like didn't get as much uh, play, but is in that same playbook, is Logan Lucky. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other, the Soderbergh heist movie you're talking about. The racetrack movie, yeah. The race, yes, the heist movie that is, um, you know, Daniel Craig and that crew. And I think that's a fun, super fun movie. That um, was that, like that is in I the couldn't... same world as what we're talking about. Right, and you got like Adam Driver, right, and, and yeah. uh, Channing Tatum. I think the thing that was jarring to me the first time I saw it was that thing of Daniel Craig being like, "Hey, y'all," you know, but oh, that, yeah, the, the origin of that accent, which we've now grown accustomed to. <laughs> now we just think he's what he's just from Alabama. I think right. Daniel Craig is like I'm. I'm sometimes I'm James Bond, the most sophisticated man, and sometimes I'm like a gator man crawling out of the swamp. Uh, what else? What else have you been uh, watching? Um, I want to shout you out for we never talked about our friend Ed Brubaker's um, Batman animated. Uh, oh, the Crusader. yes. Yes. And you were on uh, as the twins of the penguin. Yes. Uh, and it was you were terrific. But I thought that show was dynamite. How good is that show? It's truly it. like it gave me everything. I guess I just haven't seen a show like that. I'm hoping that the new Penguin show, the Colin Farrell Same. HBO show. Has that vibe. Yes, because there's something exceptionally fun to do Batman in that type of world. I mean, I think it's like to put it in the 40s, it just, I think, makes it better. But I yes. also just think the underworld, the, that crime, I, I thought they did a fantastic job. And that was truly yeah. uh, the best job. Ever. What a cool, I, I, what a cool thing to be a part of. And what a great show. I, I had a blast watching it. Um, and great, great cast, great, great stories, like a really an adult revisiting of Bruce Tim. Uh, Batman the animated series like really great yeah. stuff Ed Brubaker you know who we've talked about a million times who's been a guest on our Daredevil episode one of the best comics writers working in the game his Reckless series is incredible uh, all of his stuff is just just f- fantastic and Ed right now I, don't, I think it's okay to announce that Ed is right now in production on oh yeah on bringing these things to life which oh, is Oh he's making Criminal right now they're yeah. making Criminal uh for Amazon I believe right is that right yes, Amazon Yes yeah and it's they've I'm been sure. they were shooting up in uh I think it is Amazon they were shooting up in uh Seattle Portland. we were doing our show uh, Portland, or Seattle. yeah 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 one of the and, uh, uh, great I'm could not be more excited if you're looking for Graphic novels, crime-based stories. These are not superhero stories. These are not supernatural stories. Crime-based street-level detectives and crooks and con men. You can do, I mean, Ed Brubaker is the top of the list, and the criminal books are phenomenal. Uh, They are, it, it is an interwoven series of characters and time periods in which just basic crimes are being done and it is just fantastic i love these books can't recommend it enough and i'll tell you you know as because I, I it has been announced charlie hunnam is is uh the lead yeah you have people like richard jenkins in it it is going to be like a who's who of your favorite uh yep. characters uh act actors. i'm, really, I'm excited really. for it i can't wait um I can't wait. I will say um, a bunch of other stuff just to throw out there. There is, I I talked on this a a while ago about the four hour documentary about the making of RoboCop called RoboDoc. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, there is now a five hour documentary about the making of Aliens. I just saw that Aliens Expanded. I just saw that last night on Plex and I was like, wait a second. How did I not know about this? And I was like, I have to watch. Is it good? (laughs) It's great. It's great. Okay. It's very similar to the RoboCop one. It's great because they have everybody. Everybody who's alive is participating. Wow. Sigourney Weaver, James Cameron, all the actors, all the everybody who's alive. So it's similar to the other one. And they're just telling stories. So it doesn't have a real it feels almost like a fan documentary in the right. sense that it's it's overly long, it's indulgent, and it's a lot of it is just storytelling, but that's what I loved about it. I loved hearing about the camaraderie and hearing about what it was like on set, everybody talking about how incredible and wonderful Bill Paxton was. Just really great stuff, you know. And and you know uh that uh the writer or director of that, Ian Nathan, uh is getting ready to start shooting The Thing Expanded. Ooh. 
great. Oh, that's a home yeah. run. I love that. Yeah. So I think that's they, fantastic. Ooh, cool. So yeah, there we go. Um, all right, Jason, we're going to wrap it up right now and we will be back in uh, a little bit. Are we going to be back? We'll be back <laughs> next time. Next time. <laughs> All right, people, I hope you enjoyed my chat with Jason, but it is finally time to announce our next movie. All right, next week we'll be going from rat burgers to double-decker bologna sandwiches. That's right. You didn't have to be a brain surgeon to figure this one out. We will be watching one of the best, worst movies of all time, 1990's Troll 2, which has absolutely nothing to do with Troll 1. That's right, nothing. They just took the title. As a matter of fact, Troll 2 is about goblins, but... Here's the idea, right? Uh, a vacationing family discovers that the entire town they're visiting is inhabited by goblins disguised as humans who plan to eat them. Okay, Rotten Tomato gives this film a 5% score on the tomato meter. And Nick Shager from Lessons of Darkness writes, It's rare to find a film with such an ignominious reputation that actually lives up to the hype. And guess what? Nick is right. Let's take a listen to the trailer for Troll 2. Have a nice stay at Mill Park. You in our city. Powers of evil are very strong here. Help the car down! I'm sick! They're eating her! Well, they're going to eat me! Kids with a sweet tooth like yours love ice cream. Delicious. And purified. <laughs> Troll 2 is available to stream on Amazon Prime Video, Freevee, Tubi, and Canopy. In addition to Canopy, Hoopla and Libby are two more digital media services offered by your local public library that are absolutely free. All you need is a library card, and sometimes you don't even need that because you can just sign up for a library card on the app. It's a great way to do it. The Libby app, I love it. Consume uh, TV, music, audiobooks, ebooks, and comics for free. That's right. And that's it for me. That is all for Last Looks. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please rate and review the show. It helps us. Plus, make sure you are following us and have automatic downloads turned on. It helps the show and we appreciate it. Now, you can visit us on social media at HDTGM, and I want to shout out the Action Jackson 5 for making our opening theme song, and a big thank you to our producers, Scott Sonny and Molly Reynolds, our movie-picking producer, Avril Halley, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros, and our engineer, Casey Holford. We will see you next week for Troll 2.